Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to take your 3D model from Blender to Sketchfab. I already made a video on this topic a while ago but it is now kind of outdated and I recently learned about a new workflow. So in my previous video I showed you that to take your model from Blender into Sketchfab you have to export your model first into a supported format like GLTF or FPX. But recently I learned that Sketchfab already supports the .blend format which is the native file format for Blender. This means that you can directly import your Blender scene into Sketchfab and uh, this is really handy for Blender users and I'm not sure why this is not a very well known feature and you don't find much documentation or people talking about over the internet. I tried it out and it works surprisingly well and the overall workflow is really fast as a result of this. So let me give you a small introduction on Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a platform to share 3D content and the unique thing about Sketchfab is that the viewer that they use works in 3D space. So you can really move the camera and zoom in, zoom out and really share your 3D art in 3D. And another great thing is that you can go to this model inspector and if you are have a curious mind that you can really see how the model was structured. So you can view the topology, you can see the different texture maps like base color, roughness, so you can really inspect the model and it's a great way to share and collaborate with your 3D art. So let's start. I'm using Blender version 2.83 and the intended audience for this tutorial are people who already know their way around Blender so they know about the UI and the terminologies. I will first prepare the scene and the mesh and then I will move on to the materials and I will show you how to set them up correctly so that they appear the right way in Sketchfab. So first I want to delete all the non-mesh data from the scene like the lights and the camera and Sketchfab doesn't support it yet and it has its own lights and camera which we will have a look at later so let's delete it and then also let's delete this plane which I was using to catch the shadow and now we only have these three objects in the scene which are part of the main mesh. Then we need to apply all the modifiers and a quick way to do this is to select all of your objects, go to object menu and convert to mesh. And then I also want to apply the rotation and the scale for all of the objects. So let's select them and then control A rotation and scale. This is just to make sure that everything appears correct in Sketchfab. It's not a necessary step but some artifacts can occur if your scale is for example in minus. So it's just a precautionary step. Now I want to join all of my separate objects into one object. So let's select all of them and control J to join them. And this is just an optional step and it will work fine even if you don't do it. And you can see that the blender has taken care that all the ma different materials are applied to the correct part of the joined object. So let's move on to preparing the materials for this object. Let's open up a new panel and go to the shader editor. I use the PBR texturing workflow for this model and if anyone does not know what PBR is, PBR is short for physical base rendering and it is a shading model which results in very realistic looking surfaces. This is just a very short definition and I will uh, leave some links in the description if you want to read uh, about it more. I use the software Quixel Mixer to do the PBR texturing for this object and it's a really great software. I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, it's free and you can texture directly on your model and it has a lot of uh, procedural uh, masks and uh, layering system which can help you uh, 
to really uh, push forward your texturing uh, process. I also made a video series about how to use Mixer with Blender and I will also leave a link for that in the description. One great thing about PBR is that the appearance of your model remain consistent across different real-time renders like different game engines, Unreal or Unity. Uh, so from Mixer I exported the set of textures and then in Blender I plugged the, these textures into the principal BSDF shader to create the material. Let me share a neat trick with you to quickly set up your uh, PBR material. So let's delete the textures first and select the principal BSDF shader Control Shift T and then you can select your textures so albedo, normal and roughness and this naming setup is necessary for Blender to recognize that which texture is which and you can set this up in Mixer to export those textures as such. Then I click the principal texture setup button and voila. So it has set up the textures correctly so albedo, roughness and normal and also it has set them up with a mapping uh, setup and this comes from the node wrangler add-on which is uh, the part of the blender installation and it should be enabled by default if you're not using pbr textures instead or if you're using a complex material then you'll need to bake uh, your nodes into simple image textures and i already showed that in my previous uh, blender to sketchfab video uh, I leave a link in the description uh, and you can follow it from there. There are also many add-ons that it can help in that case. Uh, the important thing is that everything should be set up with the principal BSDF shader. This is a very important point. If you have set up everything correctly with the principal BSDF shader, then all of these textures will also be correctly set up by Sketchfab when you upload your blend file and you won't need to do it manually and this will save a lot of time. So all my textures are JPEG files with 2K resolution and I'm using JPEG because it results in a really small size and using this you can really keep your uh, file size small because Sketchfab does have some restrictions on how big a file you can upload. Uh, for example, for a free account, I believe it's only 50 MB. So that really helps in that. And the, the quality loss when compared to other file formats like PNG or TIFF is not really noticeable, uh, especially in the viewer from Sketchfab. So let me show you my three materials each have the same setup with the principal BSDF shader and after you do this you can see that the browse button has changed in the texture node and you can then use this button to go back to referencing this file instead of adding it to the blend. You can now save your blend file so now my file is ready to be uploaded and we will head over to Sketchfab next to upload it. So here in Sketchfab, click on upload and you can browse or drag or drop your file. I will just drop my file here and here is it and just click on upload files. And then Sketchfab will upload the model and then start some processing for it which is uh, that it's going over the mesh and setting up the textures and after it's done then you can go to edit your 3D settings uh, which means that you can set up your lights and basically set up the presentation part of your artwork in Sketchfab. So once it's done processing let's go to edit 3D settings and it will load the 3D model and we can see that Sketchfab has done a really good job of setting up the textures. So let's quickly go over the settings in Sketchfab. In this first uh, scene panel, you can uh, straighten your model if the orientation is wrong uh, in Sketchfab somehow for your imported model. Uh, but for my case, it's already correct. 
the renderer and we want to use PBR for it. Uh, the shading model, uh, we will leave it as it is. Uh, there are some properties for the camera, like field of view. Uh, if you want to turn on wireframe uh, and the background. And I will just change the background to image and use this clean dark. Uh, for this uh, model because I think it looks better. You can also use an environment if you want which you can select in the lighting panel and then it will also appear here. But for me this image works great. Let's go to the lighting panel and right now uh, Sketchfab is using an environment HDRI image and you can change this image here and you can also use your own but to upload your own image you need to have a pro account on Sketchfab. You can rotate the HDRI, change the brightness, change some settings for the shadows and you can set it as background if you don't like the boring black that I'm using. There's also an option to use lights instead of the environment. So let's turn that on for a bit and we can quickly use a preset like this three point lighting and you can use alt and left mouse click to rotate it quickly and see what you like i will maybe turn the intensity of this light up a bit So you can play around and set up your scene as you like. I will just turn it off for now and use the HDRI. You can also turn on the ground shadows for a nice shadow uh, effect and change some settings for it if you like it. I will turn this off for now. Going to the material panel you can see that it displays all of our materials that we had and it quickly shows which part of the mesh a material applies to. You can also click on it to select it and then you can change the textures that it's using uh, and set it up correctly if it does not appear correct. For this model everything appears correct already. Uh, there's only one thing that I want to add is the it's the ambient occlusion map that I have. Let's first add those textures. Go to manage textures, import, select the AO maps and I don't know which part is it for the soul I want to use the so it's already correct. This is the one and this is the last one so this so here it is so if you turn it off you can see that it's giving us some occlusion effect as well around the edges and the corners so for my model I only have the albedo, roughness, normal and image occlusion for my uh, materials. If you are also using other maps like displacement or clear coat, emission, uh, you can also set it up here and the inputs that are supported by the principal BSDF in Blender like the emission or clear coat I would suppose that Sketchfab also support it directly so that they are set up correctly automatically when you load your blend file. Uh, but I haven't tested it personally so I cannot guarantee it. So let's go to the next panel which is the post processing filters and you can use these filters to really uh, enhance your model. For example this SSAO which is the screen space image occlusion and it basically this uh, will limit the amount of light that reaches some parts of the object which are naturally occluded uh, like corners and cavities 
and you can increase the intensity to see the effect. So this part is getting darkened a little bit. After SSAO, you can also use depth of field, but that is only possible with an HDRI background, which I'm not using at the moment. Uh, you can also use other uh, effects like chromatic aberration, bloom, but I don't like any of them. Screen space reflection is really interesting. If your object is uh, a glossy one, but my object is really rough, so we don't need it uh, for the moment. The next panel is the annotations panel and you can add some description to your model if you want uh, by double clicking it and making a title like front view and this saves the, the view uh, as well as other detail like a link or images. So you click on it and it will take you there like so. I don't need it at the moment so I will delete it. So the next panels are animation, AR, VR and sound uh, which I don't need at the moment but animation panel is for if your model has some animations in it uh, and you can set it up here. AR, VR if, it's, if you want to set up your model to be viewed using a VR or an AR headset. Sound is if you want to add some sound to your uh, scene. So in the end you can select which view uh, does your model open in when someone uh, opens it. So you can just uh, pick up any angle for the camera and then save view. And then this is the default view of your model. Uh, you can click save settings in the end and then exit and then uh, change the title, add some description and then click on publish to publish your model on the Sketchfab uh, website. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing my channel. Until we meet again in the next video. Bye.